Hi, when you use icons in your PowerPoint presentations, the way that you normally animate them is like this. You have just the icon faded in or some kind of a basic animation and then you have the text element that follows. Today, I want to share with you a simple idea that can make this look far more dynamic, especially when you want to use this for video creation or you want to showcase your key presentations. On a click, we show the first icon like this. The second one is like this and the third one is like this. Can you see these animations are subtle yet they make the slide look more dynamic. Let me show you how to implement this simple idea in your presentations from scratch. But before that, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com, the creator of comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle a collection of more than 4,500 premium animated PowerPoint templates that help you create beautiful and engaging presentations in minutes. Here I am using the latest version of PowerPoint which is Office 365. Icons come as part of the package so when you go to insert and go to icons you would be able to find a whole range of useful icons that come as part of the program. If you don't have Office 365 I'll show you how to deal with it a bit later. The best part about the icons that you get as part of PowerPoint is they are in SVG format so you can edit them quite easily. Let us take some random icon. I'm going to take this one and say insert and you can see that this is the icon that we got. Let me increase the size so you can clearly see what I've got here. Now if you were to apply a simple fade in animation by going to animations and fade this is how the animation appears and it is not really bad but it is nothing exciting. Now let me show you how to make this far more exciting with a bit of animation. The first thing I'm going to do is to right click on this and go to convert to shape option. Now from SVG this has become a Microsoft object. I can further break this down by right clicking and going to group and ungroup option. Now I can decide what elements I want animated and which way. For example I can see that since this is a van it can enter the scene with a fly in animation. And then I have this logo which will be quite nice if I were to just make it spin a little bit. And then I have this light which can glow with these three lines. So how do we animate these elements? First let us select this and then say this needs to be wiped and you can see that this is wiping out. And to make it a little more dramatic we can have it repeat itself maybe two or three times. So let us go to animation pane. So these are the animation events here. So let us select all of them while holding the shift button down and go to effect options and then say timing. Go to repeat and say repeat three times and say ok. So this is how the glow happens. Beautiful. Next I can rotate this logo to bring a bit of dynamism here. You can see that when I move this there are two parts here. I can delete one of the parts by selecting and deleting. Now I can rotate this or spin this to bring a little bit of action. So let me add a spin animation from emphasis and you can see that the spinning is way too much. I can go to effect options and say it can have a simple half spin here or even a quarter spin to make it milder. So that looks nice. Now this is way too long so we are going to match this with the previous timing. If you see in the previous case it is 0 0.5 into 3. This time it is going to be 1.5 for this to match this and this happens with previous. Now the rest of the elements can enter the scene. So we are going to have everything selected but for these straight lines and this icon. See I have got my shift button pressed while I click on those elements that I want deselected. Now I have got the remaining elements selected so let me press ctrl G to group them and these enter the scene with a simple fly in animation and they come in from left. So that is the first animation so we are going to have this right up here and if you want to have a bit of bounce you can do that as well. I go to effect options and then add a bit of bounce end and say ok. Now that is nice. Now right after that we are going to have these animations that we just did. Now when I go to slideshow I see that this element is already there which is not what we want. So we are going to have an animation that introduces this element onto the scene. So let us select this add animation and say this is going to fade in and this happens right before it starts spinning and we are going to say with previous and then the spin happens. 
Now, when I go to slideshow, the way the icon appears is like this. Can you see here? It's far more interesting than the static ambulance animation that you had seen earlier. The thing is, once you put your mind to it, you would be able to find these small ways to animate and make these icons interesting no matter what kind of icon you want to use. For example, when I go to insert and I go to icons, I can see right on this page, there are quite a few interesting animations that are possible. For example, when I take a look at this clock, I can have a teeter animation that allows this whole clock to vibrate. The same way, when I see this fish and the coral here, I can have this fish enter the scene with a simple floating animation or a flying animation. And for this circular process, we can have a spin animation. You get the drift. You think about what kind of small animations you can do to make the icon look more dynamic. Now, what if you don't have Office 365 or you see that certain icons are not the way that you like them? For example, when I go to insert icons and search for security related icons, I see that I have the scale icon and I say insert. Now let us expand this a little bit so you can clearly see this. Now the moment I see this icon, I would like to have these scales to teeter a little bit to add dynamism. But then I can't really do it because when I right click, go to convert to shape and right click and say ungroup, I can see that this whole piece is one singular element and I can't really apply any kind of teeter animation here. So how do we do this? you recreate this icon using simple shapes. Let me do that very, very quickly so you can follow me. Let me go to Auto Shapes Gallery, pick up the line tool and have it straight. And then let us make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl D and then let me rotate it to 90 degrees and then place it over here. And for these two pans, let me go to Auto Shapes Gallery, pick up the triangle tool and then let me pick up this circle and then let us have this cut. So let me go to Auto Shapes Gallery, pick up the rectangle tool, and I'm going to cut the circle while holding the shift button. I'm going to select this rectangle and then say shape subtract. Now I can place this somewhere over here. If I want, I can even reduce the size like so, and I can place it over here. Let me remove the shape fill for this by going to shape fill and by saying no fill, and I can ensure that the lines are properly aligned. Now let me select this, press Ctrl G to group it and then let me hold the Ctrl button down as I move this to the other side. So we create the other span as well. Now we just need something at the bottom. So let us select the same line here and then place it over here. Maybe I can even reduce the size and this gives the pedestal. Now I have a nice looking icon. Let me select all of this, go to shape outline and give it black color and increase the weight to somewhere around three points. And I can do some minor adjustments like say for example, I can have both these pans go a little bit down. Now that looks nice. You can do all kinds of small embellishments like I can go to the circle and then draw the circle, have it in white colored fill, go to shape outline and have this in the same color and increase the weight to around three points, reduce the size a little bit and I can place this right here at the intersection. Now I have this beautiful decoration. The same way when I want to have this piece, I can go to Auto Shapes Gallery and pick up this rounded rectangle, increase the curvature like so. I can go to Shape Fill, go to White Color, go to Shape Outline, Black Color, and then increase the weight to around three points. And I can even cut this so we can match the same design. Select this, hold the shift button down, select this rectangle and then say shape subtract, reduce the size a little bit more and I can place this somewhere over here and then move this a little down. You can see that pretty much we recreated whatever we got here. Now I can select all these central elements and have them grouped as one object. And then I can have these two panes and the connecting line and have that as another group. Now, if I want to have this animated, I can introduce this with a simple wipe animation from bottom. And right after that, I can have this enter the scene with a fade animation. So I can say after previous and after it enters the scene, we are going to have this teeter. So let us go to add animation and say teeter. And this happens with previous or after previous. Let us say with previous. Now see how the same animation looks. This is just the static version. On a click, I have this entering the scene and we have a dynamic, beautiful animation shown in icons. 
In the meantime, do you want to learn some simple and creative PowerPoint ideas you can use in your next presentation? Then click on the link here to join our 5-day free email course called 25 Creative PowerPoint Ideas. These are simple, quick and useful PowerPoint ideas I have not shared elsewhere. So go ahead, click on the link, join the course and I will see you inside.